I just got a bunch of comics from the dollar bin that I'm super excited about. Not only because they were a great deal, but also because many of these bring back a lot of fun childhood memories, beginning with this one, Street Fighter number one, which of course contains the first appearance of many of these Street Fighter characters. And back when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of this game. And in those days, our family didn't have a ton of money, and so I never had the latest video game system, but Walmart would always hook one up with one of the most popular games at the time and put it out on display so that, of course, customers would come and play it and then want to buy it. Well, I really took advantage of this back in the day, and I'd have my mom drop me off at Walmart, and I would just stay there for hours playing Street Fighter 2, and it was kind of whoever won would stay up, and some other customer would come and take their place, and I would always use Dawson, because back in those days, nobody really knew what they were doing, and if you've played this game, he just is able to like extend his arms and legs and hit people from a distance, so I just button mashed from a distance and would kill people and stay up all day, and it was just so much fun, and so that's always made me a huge fan of this franchise, even though one of my biggest disappointments came when they finally made a Street Fighter movie, and I actually saved up to go to the movies and see it live, which was a big deal for me. I didn't really go to movies as a kid, and it was just garbage. Even as a kid, I realized this is just terrible, but I still have a soft spot for this franchise, and so super happy to pick up this book. And as much as I like Street Fighter, a couple of years later, another game came out that was very similar, but that just changed everything for me. And that was Mortal Kombat. And I remember going to the arcade, because back then, yeah, you would go and have arcades and put your quarters in, and just stay in there. And again, I didn't really have money, but I would watch other people play, and it was just crazy for the first time seeing people rip people's spines out and hearts out and punching their heads off and man you know when I finally did get a video game system one Christmas I immediately started saving my money so that I could buy my own version of Mortal Kombat and I played that game so much and so it's super exciting to get issue number zero and issue number one now this isn't the first appearance of these characters in comics unfortunately uh, because Midway, the people who make the game, actually put out their own comic. I don't know if they made other comics, uh, but these are still considered pretty collectible. This one usually goes for about $30 to $40, and this one for about $20. So, of course, to pick them up for a dollar was super exciting. Now, another big part of my childhood, especially when it came to comics, was the debut of Image Comics. And it was a huge deal back then. If you lived through the early 90s collecting comics, you know how crazy it was when some of the most popular artists at Marvel went and started their own company where they would own the properties they created. And I've slowly been trying to collect the first issue of each of those artists, and I've got most of them. And this might be the only one that I didn't have, but now I have a copy of Cyber Force number one, which was the first comic that Mark Silvestri ever put out at Image Comics. And it has a ton of first appearances. You know, basically everybody that's a part of this team, Rip Claw was always my favorite. And so this isn't a really expensive book, yeah, you know, if you buy it in a normal back issue bin. But you never know if someone ever decides to make something of this property, like a movie. I mean, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, this book gained in value. And I just think, again, just for the historical significance and just for me wanting to collect all these number ones from the early image days, I'm super excited to add it to my collection. Now, before I get to the next comic, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, of course, I'd appreciate if you consider doing so now. And also, of course, from that era, if you collected comics, you know something that was a huge deal was just tons of gimmick covers. And so I was also able to pick up some gimmick covers that I don't have. And I always love picking these up when I can find them for a dollar. I've got Hulk 2099 number one. And this also completes a set for me. So now I have all of these 2099 issues that have this kind of foil wraparound cover. And so super happy to have this. I always think my, my friend Jacob from Jake with Comics when it comes to 2099 issues, he's a big fan and has made me a bigger fan. 
And especially now in adulthood, I understand sci-fi and a lot of the points that it was making about technology now that I didn't get as a kid. So I actually enjoy this 2099 universe more now than I ever did then. Uh, and so super happy to have this book. And then I also got Thunderstrike number one. And again, uh, yeah, a foily gimmick cover. Uh, but you never know if a character like this is going to debut in the MCU at some point. And this could go from you know, a few dollars to 10 or 15 And so to get it for a dollar, I'm super excited. It's also a big deal. I remember when I first started collecting comics, he, Thor was the first hero that all of a sudden you had someone else take over the role. You know, Eric Masterson all of a sudden becomes Thor instead of Donald Blake. And I remember just being blown away by that. But if you know the story, eventually, like always happens, the original hero takes the mantle back. So Donald Blake came back in the picture. And then Eric Masterson is gifted this mace by, I think, Odin, I guess. And he becomes Thunderstrike, this other type of Thor character. Another gimmick cover, Force Works number one. And back in the day, one of my favorite titles to read was Avengers West Coast. And basically, I guess sales were low, and so they always tried new gimmicks. Uh, but they came up with a storyline where basically the East Coast Avengers, who were kind of the main Avengers team, frowned upon some of the viciousness that the West Coast Avengers used, especially in something called Operation Galactic Storm. And so they had this big kind of discussion and up in this fallout, and all the West Coast Avengers resigned from being Avengers so that they could then be more vicious and wouldn't have to answer to good old Captain America. And uh, then they formed their own team, Force Works. And yeah, I guess they're, yeah, Force Works, they're um, rough. Uh, kind of a lame name, I've never really liked that. But I always wanted this issue just because I was a fan of that team. And this has the weirdest gimmick cover. I, I don't even know what it is. It's like they're, it's almost like this is supposed to kind of fold out. But it, it doesn't. It's like taped. And I feel like I'm supposed to pull on this and open it up. But I think it would kind of damage it. So I guess I'm not going to. If you've ever seen this comic and you know how this is supposed to be accessed, this, this stuff inside... Uh, let me know in the comments below because I am pretty clueless and I don't want to just damage this thing. Now, speaking of, of gimmick covers, uh, I filled in a bit of my spectacular Spider-Man run, which I'm trying to collect. And I, I was shocked at how many gimmick covers this title used. So I'm going to count down so you have Spectacular Spider-Man number 229, just this random Spectacular Spider-Man issue. Now, usually they would try to do gimmick covers when it started at like issue 100, you know, issue 50, kind of these landmark numbers. <laughs> but Spectacular Spider-Man apparently didn't care. And I don't know if sales were low or they just wanted to price gouge and so they could charge $3.95 here instead of $1.50. But as you're going to see, man, it's like every couple months, new Spectacular Spider-Man gimmick cover. And so this is, you know, an acetate cover with 229. And then just a little bit earlier, 225, where you had this holo hologram, hollow disc cover, they call it. And again, no really key significance to this book, uh, except for they tripled the price and put a little hologram on it. 223, which has this die cut cover. And I always loved the die cut covers. I always thought they were cool. But just, you know, again, a random issue. <laughs> 217, which this whole storyline, power and responsibility, ran through all the Spider Man titles. And each one had a foil cover. Again, man, just <laughs> price gouging the customer. This, I think this is actually part of what got me out of collecting comics for a while because all of a sudden everything was a gimmick cover and I couldn't afford them all and and I didn't want to break up runs. I didn't want to all of a sudden go missing issues. And so it just kind of became unaffordable for me for a while. But this is a yeah, flip cover. Yeah, I, I guess does it read? Yeah, it's got, I guess, a different story on the other side, a short story. And then this technically, I guess, isn't a gimmick cover. 
but it is a gimmick. Uh, number 213, and it says, <laughs> all these gimmicks ran through all four of the Spider-Man titles at the time. It says, uh, in each Spidey title this month, so this is Polybag, that's where the gimmick is. Uh, a different forest color animation style print based on the TV show. Is saying the new Spider-Man cartoon series was coming in. Collect all six. So, uh, you know, they're incentivizing you to try to buy as many of these as you can so you can get all six. And, of course, with poly bags, you know, when you're a collector. And back then, you know, it was like the first kind of comic collecting boom. Uh, you know, things were overprinted, but we all thought these things were going to be so valuable. So you're like, well, I got to buy at least two copies, one that I can open and read, and then one that I preserve because this thing is going to be worth a billion dollars uh, one day. And uh, yeah, who know who knew that I would just be able to get this for a dollar back then when it retailed at two ninety five. And and so you've got issue two thirteen, two seventeen, two twenty three. Two months later, two twenty five and two twenty nine, all gimmick covers. Oh man, Marvel with uh, the price gouging back then. And I'll show a couple more uh, cool comics that I got, and these aren't necessarily as uh, relevant to my childhood, even though this one did come out when I was collecting as a child, this first one. Venom Lethal Protector, number two. Uh, but this contains the first appearance of the jury and the first appearance of General Orwell. And there are rumors that Venom 3 is going to include General Orwell. And so this might be a book that you consider picking up now. Uh, it was definitely a lot more expensive back when the second Venom movie was coming out. And so it's pretty affordable now. Obviously, I got it for just a dollar. Uh, so, again, maybe pick it up, especially if you find a good price on it. Now, these last two comics don't have any key significance, but they do help me fill holes in a run that I'm trying to complete Plus, I just really love their covers because basically I'm a fan of any kind of cosmic cover. And so we have Silver Surfer number three, where you have Silver Surfer battling the runner, and Silver Surfer number 10 that has Galactus. And I'm always a huge fan of Galactus being on the cover and Eternity on the cover, and then Silver Surfer and Nova down below. So that's my haul. Tell me in the comments below which of those books you like the best. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you consider doing so now. Like the video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to the next one.